All right, here come the puppies. Hi, puppies. Hi, puppies. So, in this video, I'm gonna give you an update on how the puppies are doing. As you can see, they are so big and so cute. Oh my goodness. And, oh, this is, I would like to show you, this is my favorite of the puppies. This is the only one I'm giving a name to. This is Saya. Stella is, um, Stella is the angry lady upstairs. Ooh, hi, Saya. Stella has quickly become the angry lady upstairs. She does not like it when the puppies try to come up over the edge. And the puppies have, they have gotten to that place now where they come up. And in fact, this morning I had a really, I had a really big scare because the other dogs do not like the puppies. Do not like the puppies coming upstairs. That's like their territory. They've, they, oh my God, what are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? So the other dogs have tolerated the puppies being here, but they don't exactly, they're not like, oh my God, look at this. Look at this cuteness. So they spend most of their days playing. They spend most of, <laughs> they spend most of their days playing in the yard. Just today, I saw them go down the steps. So little by little, they are, Oh my gosh, they are, okay. Can I just say it's really hard to concentrate when a puppy is, is licking your hand. Oh my God. So one, two, three, four, where's the fifth one? So I have some good news um, that, oh, three. I have some good news that I actually uh, have adopted out one puppy. And then so far I have three more homes lined up. So I am, still going to figure out something for the other two. If all else fails, they're gonna go to the dog sanctuary with Paris Lee Brace. But I would like to avoid that. Look, 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 look. So big they can go down all by themselves now. I know, oh my gosh. Hey! Oh my God. You can do it, come on. There you go. So, <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, uh, so the question, Aaron asked, where did these puppies come from? So a pregnant street dog came to my house about a little over a month ago and gave birth to the puppies in this here dog house. So this was a safe, perfect space for these little cuties to be brought into the world. They have been well cared for. They have been well fed. They've been well taken care of. And now actually the mom spends most of the time away. So they're, they're pretty much... They're pretty much weaned at this point. And they are the cutest. And it's been fun to every day watch them get just a little bit older, a little bit bolder, a little bit more playful. And they, they know my call. Hey, puppies. Hey, puppies. Yeah. So that's what I call out to them when I come home or in the morning. And yeah, they're doing really well. Oh, oh my God. So, so I only have... I only have two weeks left with the puppies um, because then, then they're moving on to other homes. So the vet is gonna come uh, on the 7th to give them their final dose of deworming medicine. And then I have to resist the urge to hold on to them. So someone asked, do they come over the edge? So yeah, so now, oh my God. So now the puppies will come over the edge, but there's a problem with that. My dogs don't like it. Stella doesn't like it. Mama doesn't like it. In fact, this morning, normally I keep this, I keep this gate closed, but somehow, oh my God, somehow this morning, two of the puppies, it must not have been locked, two of the puppies got in. And so I was laying in bed over there, writing in my journal, looking out the window, and I saw the puppies galloping and playing around. And I heard Mama growling, right? Mama was laying here, she was growling. I was like, okay, it's fine. You know, the puppies, the puppies are learning. You know, they, they need to learn some street smarts. They need to have interactions with other dogs. And then, and then what happened was, oh my God. Suddenly I heard this big rah! And it, through the window I saw it, Mama was attacking one of the puppies. I was like, no! I was like, so, I was so scared. I thought, like, that she killed the puppy. 
I, I thought she killed the puppy. And I ran outside. Oh, I was so scared. And uh, it turns out it was fine. She just gave the puppy a good thrashing and a good good scaring. I think the puppy had like gotten into her food bowl because it came out. The food was was like dumped everywhere. Um, and then it's like, okay, puppies, you can't be up here. So like, so, you know, as much as I enjoy having them playing up here, this, they have to stay down in puppy world. And this is, uh, this is big dog world. This is, this is like the adult table. That's the puppy table. So Marilyn, where's the sixth puppy? So the sixth puppy got adopted to a little girl. I think she's about 10 or 11 years old who really, really wanted a puppy. Um, so her dad, Marcos, is the guy who... Actually, you want to know what's funny? Oh, let's go check on, the, on my lunch. I'm also cooking. No, Barbara, it's not a replay. We're currently doing this live. Oh, yeah, that's done. Okay, cool. We got some, some lentils and some veg. We're doing, I cooked them separately because um, you get a better, a better, you get a better flavor when they're cooked separately. By the way, my voice is really raspy because I've been doing a lot of singing. I, yesterday I sung for about four to five hours, about four, four hours. I've been uh, doing a lot of vocal practice, a lot of warm ups, a lot of just singing. So my my voice is a little raspy for that. So I'm I know I need to be careful. Um, so so I was really scared. I was really scared when that happened, but thankfully the puppy was okay. So the sixth puppy has been adopted out to Marcos. Now the funny thing is, was originally when I found that these puppies were born here, I was scared to tell my landlord because I know that she's not a fan of the street dogs coming by. I know she's she'd probably not be the biggest fan of Bronco and Mama. Although I can make a strong case for them that they really help me feel safe. You know, having the three of them because you know Stella's a great watchdog, but she's not a very scary looking dog. But Bronco and Mama, they are the more scary dogs. So with the three of them. Um, they help me feel safe as a, as a woman living alone here on the top of the hill. Anyways, I knew that my landlord was not such a big fan of the street dogs. So I was very hesitant to tell her about the puppies. In fact, I almost let a fear stop me from telling her the fear that she would come and try to like take them away or harm them or like, or like kick them out. Right. So I was really afraid. And initially I wanted to conceal the fact that the puppies were here. But I was like, no, I just had this big vocal opening at the ayahuasca ceremony and I was like so powerfully in my truth. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna face it. I'm gonna stand for my truth. I'm gonna tell the truth. And I'm just gonna face the consequences of my actions. And if I need to stand guard over that dog house and, and, and protect the puppies, if someone try, try, comes and tries to take them away, I will do that, right? So, <clears throat> man, that's a, good, that's a good tip with the honey. So anyway, so instead, so I messaged her and I said, okay, here's the situation. Um, came home, pregnant dog has given birth in the dog house. I've contacted Aaron of Paris Libres. Here's what, here's what I propose. He says that if I just give them a safe place to just get old enough to be separated from the mother, then he'll take them. And you know, it's not ideal. I'm sorry if this is an inconvenience, blah, 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 blah. And she actually surprised me. She's like, okay, great. Good luck. Uh, and then she actually showed me a picture of a dog that she had recently taken in. So I was like, okay, wow. So the reason I'm telling you that story is that in that story, I recounted how, you know, hey, there's still this hole in the fence. That's where the dogs come through. You know, I had mentioned it several times. It was never fixed when I first moved in. And so I just got used to the dogs coming. So she sent Marcos and his cousin to come and fix the hole in the fence. They tried. Didn't work. The dogs got back. Which is fine. For me. Um, but in the process of being here fixing the fence, Marcos saw the puppies. And he was like, oh, my daughter wants a puppy. And he's like, let me talk to my wife. And so he went and talked to his wife and then came back a week or so later, shortly after the, the puppies had started, started eating puppy food, had this big, big old bag of puppy food. And he said yes, brought his daughter and she picked out her puppy and you could see how much she loved him. And I said, okay, here, here are the rules. You have to buy them actual dog food not just tortillas, because that's what a lot of locals just give the dog, they just give him tortillas, and you have to get him spayed when he's old enough. And he agreed to both of those rules, and and off off they went, and I sent them off with a big bag of puppy food. And, um, and yeah, so what's cool about that is that that solution would not have arrived if I had not faced my fear and spoken my truth in that situation. So I like that. So, so far, um, 
The guy at the corner also wants a puppy. Um, Gloria is probably going to take a puppy. And then also, I was walking the other day and I saw my neighbor, Melchora, for, of my land where I will be living. And she told me she was sad that her dog had just died. And I said, do you want a puppy? And she said, yes, she wants a puppy. And I showed her the video and she's like, oh, that one, that one, the black one, my favorite one, Saya, which is perfect because that's the one that I want to stay most connected to. And now that dog will live with the neighbor by my land. So it feels like it's working out. So there's still two more puppies that need home. So Marcos actually suggested to the, my landlord that they keep one of the puppies here as the dedicated like house security dog. So we'll see. And then that leaves one more puppy. So so we'll see what we'll see what the divine plan is for these puppies and I trust that they're going to be safe and well and go to a good home, go to good home. So so yeah, so Sloan, yeah, great puppy love story. And you know what's cool about it, Sloan, is that I think it's important that, you know, as we go through this process of like really changing and shifting ourselves, like we have to be willing to face our fears and and take a stand for our truth, right? And I was scared to tell my, my landlord because I thought it might lead to the death of the puppies. I imagined in my in my mind this this great illusion, this great kind of movie played out where like some worker came and like violently swept up the puppies, these like newborn little baby puppies and like cast them into the street. And it's just like, so that's, that was the image in my mind that I was facing as I went to speak my truth. So it took a lot of courage and a willingness to, to stand for the consequences of speaking my truth, which it turns out that actually worked out for the best. It did not unfold according to the horror movie in my mind, which I think is important to keep in mind because a lot of times that's what's the fear of speaking my truth is like there's a horror story that plays out so I keep quiet so I avoid the conversation so I don't step up when and where I'm called to speak my truth so you know living honestly living in alignment living living truthfully living in like the light of truth takes courage because our minds are so full of fear and so many, so often, I don't know about you, but especially in my past, it's like all of my actions, all the things I did or did not do were guided by some kind of fear. In fact, I had a dream last night where I was interviewing this woman about this, the, this book and the title was, um, what's the title? I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Let's check it out. Um, there is always some fear to blame. There's always some fear to blame, right? So I think a lot of times also it's like, okay, get to the root. What is the root? Because if we, if we can heal what's at the root, then, then the other symptoms can clear up. But as long as we're just addressing the symptoms, but not really addressing the root of the problem, then, then we're not really getting to it, so. Hi, puppies. Hi, puppies. Hi. This is a really bright spirited one. Hi. Hi. Right, watch what Stella does. Stella, are you gonna do your thing? Are you gonna be the grouchy lady upstairs? Oh, hi. Yeah. Hey puppies, oh, there's the mom. Hi Violet. So she comes a little bit. Oh, hi Jenny. She comes a little bit to feed them and they love her so much. Oh, this is the first time they're actually chasing after her, I think. That I've seen. Saya. That's Saya. Oh my god. Stella. Stella. Saya. Saya. Every time I say Saya's name, Stella looks at me. She's like, no, mom, love me. Love me. I'm your puppy. You are my puppy. You are my puppy. You are my puppy. You are my puppy. You're my best puppy. So, choo -choo. so you used to have a bunch of plants there, but they trampled them all. But and you want to know what's actually really funny is that the puppies now they spend more time up here trying to get in up here. Hey, see, Stella does not like the puppy. She's like, get away from the big, big kids table. So a lot of times the puppies will hang out here, and they'll just look through the window and cry. 
and then, and then the big dogs will growl at them. Yeah, so. So that's a funny thing. They want they want their mama, but a lot of times they want they want me. They want me, mama. Like there have been times that their mom is in the doghouse and they they're up here at this door. Maybe because I don't growl at them and try to bite them, I get, give them food and stuff. So, so anyways, yeah, Peggy. You know, yeah. Also, that's a good point. Peggy said it's, it was a relief for it was a relief for me to have told her, and it was weighed off my shoulders. And that's the thing about truth. When you tell the truth, it, it really does set you free because it takes a lot of energy to to conceal something, to hide something, to tell a false story. Because then you're always having to like prop it up and like look out for holes and like. And also, when I was engaging in the, those horror movies in my mind of what could go wrong um, if I told the truth, it was costing me a lot of energy. Plus, it was really distracting me, and so I wasn't present, and it was just taking up a lot of like my computer RAM, right? So when I told the truth, it was like ah. Oh, all this space just opened up you know so so it, it can be scary to face the consequences of, of telling the truth but it can also really set you free like you know like the quote you know the truth may hurt but it will set you free like yeah like I would I, I would rather live with the consequences of telling the truth than than with like the struggle of trying to maintain a lie you know all right Okay, it's lunchtime. And then, oh my gosh, we have our shine, not shine, we have our high vibe tribe call in a half an hour. So I gotta get going. So, nice, looks good, looks good. So, um, as always, uh, for the high vibe tribe, uh, so um, a few months ago, I activated the subscription option on this page. I hadn't wanted to do it. It was it was available to me, but I didn't want to do it because I was a little worried that I wasn't going to be able to really keep it up and 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 give people value, right? Um, but since then, a few months ago, about three or four months ago, we decided to activate it, and it's been great. We're we're still learning because it's a community, right? We're a new community, but we have a small group. We have a private group on Facebook called Erica's High Vibe Tribe. And every two weeks we get together for a Zoom call. Zoom call is when we get face to face. And recently we've started a format where we do a reading. So today I want to do a reading from one of the books that I've that has that has that I've been reading. I, I do these you know readings in the morning, and so I find the excerpts and things that we read, and then we can discuss and see how it applies to your life. So so we have a community where we support each other, where we love each other, where we lift each other up, where we hold each other through the challenges and where we're really deeply getting to know each other. So if you've ever wanted to have more contact with me, if you've ever wanted to be in a smaller group of people who are really striving and caring, yeah, Lotus is there, she says she loves our tribe. A really, it's a really beautiful, smaller, more intimate setting within this community of people who are striving and seeking, oh my God, and loving on puppies. Welcome back. Oh my gosh, this means, you know what this means? This means that they are now exploring the yard look at that do you remember how the puppy was struggling so much to get up one step and now like a big boy he's just scaling scaling those steps so anyways um we're gonna have our next zoom call in half an hour so if you want to be on that call go down if you're watching live uh go down just hit the subscribe button it's 10 bucks a month you can drop in for one month you can come for a couple months just as you like uh, there's no pressure, there's no commitment, and then every two weeks we do these Zoom calls. And then we also have this very uplifting, supportive, wonderful community of heart-centered, of heart-centered, just beautiful seekers on the path of learning and growing. Anyways, okay, that's my, that's my, that's just my plug for the High Vibe Tribe. If you want to be a part of that, just subscribe to this page, and I also really appreciate your subscriptions and support. I really appreciate the supporters, because... Yeah, you guys are helping me much more confidently step into this big land project and all the construction and the building and all the things. So High Vibe Tribe, I also posted the um, blueprints of the house, my design. We got the first uh, the first draft, the final draft. I don't know. We got the draft of my house. So if you want to also see what my house looks like, um, that's posted in the High Vibe Tribe. Um, so you tried to post twice in the group. You got error messages. I'm not sure, Amanda. 
You, it's definitely that you're not not allowed to post. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Jane has a good suggestion. Try logging out and back in, and also seeing. Um, you're not going the right way. And seeing here's a great example. Oh, come. Oh, oh, there you go. There you go, kids. But you know you can't do it for them. Otherwise, how are they going to learn? Oh, Lotus, great, you saw the blog post. So yeah, the freaking blog post. Uh, I have not put out my June newsletter yet because one, I was sick with parasites for m most of the month. And then two, when I was trying to format it to go out a newsletter, Gmail kept clipping it. So you couldn't see the message. And so what I realized is I have to do the blog post first and then do a truncated email newsletter that links to the blog post. So I finished the blog post and then now I need to do the email newsletter. So. I'm, this is, I think, the third or the fourth month that I've done this, so I'm still finding my flow. And like anything that we're learning how to do, first we gotta do it bad in order to find the right way to do things. So, so if you've been looking out for my newsletter, don't worry, you haven't missed it. I just haven't gotten it out yet, and that's actually something I'm gonna be working on today after the uh, high vibe call. Oh, Isabel, thank you so much for the stars. I appreciate it, honey. Uh, last thing, some of you, I was talking about how I am going to um, receive some help to create uh, care packages for the puppies for when they're adopted out. So I have not done that um, fundraiser yet. It'll just be, I have scheduled the day I'm going to go to Pana to go to the pet store. So I will share that closer to um, closer to the day that I go do that. Okay, so just stay tuned. All right, guys, I love you, and high vibe tribers, I will see you in about, what, 20, 20 ish minutes on the, on the Zoom call. All right, guys, I love you all very much. Thank you for being with me. Also, I feel like, I just wanna say, I feel like my content is changing, and I feel like in a lot of ways it hasn't been very exciting. It's just been a lot of like, I don't know. I don't know. So, I'm not apologizing, I'm just like, I don't know what I'm saying. Thanks for sticking with me. All right, guys. I love you. I love you. I love you.